Thanks, Kathy, Doug, and Jerry for that insightful discussion on supply chain resiliency. My pleasure now to introduce our next speaker, Jen Easterly. She's the director of the DHS's Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, as we all know it as CISA. Director Easterly, who was confirmed by the Senate just over two weeks ago, has dedicated her career to public service in upholding national security, including two tours at the White House, with President Obama and also with President Bush. She also serves as deputy for counterterrorism at NSA. She's a two-time recipient of the Bronze Star and Director Easterly retired from the U.S. Army after more than 20 years of service in intelligence and cyber ops. As director, she leads CISA's efforts to protect and defend civilian and government networks, manage systemic risks to national critical functions, and collaborate with state, local, tribal, and territorial partners and the private sector all to ensure security and resilience of the nation's cyber and physical infrastructure. Director Easterly, thank you for being here. Great. Thanks so much, Mark, for the kind introduction. It is an honor to be here today with everybody for the 10th Annual Building Resilience Through Public and Private Partnership Conference. I really appreciate the opportunity to be with you. Uh, as Mark mentioned, I was just recently sworn in as CISA's director about two weeks ago, so I'm truly excited to be here uh, as this is my first official speaking engagement uh, in, in this role. Uh, prior to joining CISA, I actually worked in the private sector for four and a half years uh, culminating as the head of resilience of Morgan Stanley and the global head of our Fusion Resilience Center. It's interesting as you think about this model, particularly what I just heard at the end of the, the supply chain discussion, uh, I was actually asked to go to Morgan Stanley to lead and build our cybersecurity fusion center, which we did. But at the end of 2019, there was a recognition that given the hybrid threat environment that we operate in, given the fact that physical and cyber risks are converged in this very digitized world we all live in, that we actually wanted to expand our platform from just a cybersecurity fusion center to a fusion resilience center with a mission to plan for, understand, prepare, respond, recover to any sort of business disrupting event uh, or risk uh, that would affect our critical business processes. So that included cyber or cyber enabled fraud, terrorist attacks, weather events, geopolitical unrest or pandemics. Uh, so resilience really is something near and dear to my heart. And quite frankly, my view over the last four years and working to ensure the resilience and security of our systems at Morgan Stanley is what brings me back into government uh, for this fantastic opportunity. I really enjoyed my time in the private sector, but I am thrilled to be back in government serving my country where, as Mark mentioned, I spent the majority of my career. Securing our homeland and solving the challenges facing our nation is arguably more important now than at any point in our history. And I believe that CISA is positioned to make an impact and I wanna be a part of it. I know that this is the same mission that all of you have. So I wanna thank you upfront for everything that you do to protect and secure our nation's critical infrastructure. CISA's mission is to lead the national effort to manage and uh, manage cyber and physical risk to our critical infrastructure. And our vision is one of secure and resilient critical infrastructure for the American people. This mission really connected with me and has drove me to be a part of this team. But the importance of the mission is becoming increasingly apparent as we've seen over the past several months. In today's globally interconnected world, our critical infrastructure, our American way of life, faces a wide array of serious risks with very real consequences. These risks come from mother nature, a diverse group of, of threat actors, including nation states, cyber criminals, terrorist groups, and other nefarious actors seeking to take advantage of our open society and the proliferation of technology to do us harm. We know that today, extreme weather events and other natural hazards seem ever present in the news headlines, all the while the heightened threat from terrorism and violent crime remains. It's increasingly local and often aimed at open gatherings like houses of worship and theaters, stadiums, and schools. And it's not just physical risks we need to worry about as network devices further weave into our lives and our businesses. These vulnerabilities provide additional attack vectors from nation states and criminals. Uh, as the discussion, last discussion went, global supply chains introduce the risk of malicious activity in software and hardware. And I can affirm it absolutely is a board level issue uh, from the job that I came from. Uh, 
Aging, outdated, under-resourced infrastructures are also a challenge that we're all familiar with across the country. During any emergency, communication between first responders and between decision makers may be at risk from disruption or a lack of interoperability. The list goes on. Uh, but I think that these examples really illustrate the dynamic environment that we all find ourselves in. To combat these threats and to build resilience into our critical national functions, those that keep the water running, the lights on, the gas pumps full, require strong partnerships between public and private sectors and really what brings us together uh, this week. Now at CISA, we understand that only by collaborating and sharing information across all sectors can we truly build a full understanding of the threats that we face. That's why recognizing the importance of our partnerships and really more than just partnership, but operational collaboration is so vital to the success of ensuring the resilience of our nation. CIS is dedicated to defending against urgent threats and hazards, as well as planning and collaborating to strengthen our critical infrastructure for the future. Our belief is that through collaborative risk management, we can prioritize the top urgent risks of today, mitigate them and drive results against those priorities. For physical hazards, we conduct vulnerability and consequence assessments to help our partners across sectors understand and address risks to critical infrastructure. Just to give you a couple examples of this work, in 2020, CISA conducted 81 cyber and infrastructure security exercises reaching over 9,000 individuals. 93,000 of our partners also successfully completed our active shooter preparedness training last year. As I mentioned earlier, physical threats can come from mother nature and CISA plays a key role in preparing for and responding to natural disasters. We work closely with our partners at FEMA. We help bring together the right people before, during, and after events to help communities prepare for and rebuild faster. In emergency communications, CISA leads the effort to ensure that national security and emergency responder communications are up and running. Last year, CISA provided emergency communications technical assistance in all 56 states and territories to address capability gaps, implement solutions, and provide training to allow for the seamless flow of information during incident response. And for cybersecurity, we focused on the most significant threat actors. Gaining visibility, taking action against these threat actors requires daily collaboration with our partners in industry, the intelligence community, and of course, law enforcement. Through our partners in the federal civilian enterprise, CISA collects incredibly rich data that allows us to look across the entire ecosystem to spot trends and threats or vulnerabilities and to share that knowledge that we gain with our partners through products such as alerts and bulletins, toolkits, cyber threat indicators, and other advisory documents. You know, to give you just a few examples of the types of alerts we released, in the past eight months, CISA has issued four emergency directives for federal agencies and activities alerts for network defenders, providing vital information needed to secure and strengthen their systems against critical software vulnerabilities found in systems like the Microsoft Exchange servers, the Pulse Secure Connect products, Windows Print Spooler services, and certain SolarWinds products. You know, as we look ahead, we know that threats against our di digital infrastructure are only going to become more sophisticated and advanced, so we need the private sector continue to continue to share information with us so that we can use it to protect everyone else. I hope that most of you are already working with us, but I wanna talk a little bit about the benefits of doing so. First, we can provide context to what you are seeing as a private sector, given our unique position to capture a holistic view of the threat landscape. We're also uniquely positioned to bring together all of the stakeholders, companies, federal agencies, the intelligence community, law enforcement, our state and local tribal and territorial partners and academia to solve some of the toughest critical infrastructure problems, to understand new technical solutions, and also to look at how our adversaries are adopting and utilizing technolog technological developments and what we need to be doing to make ourselves more secure and resilient. And also in a world where cyber incidents are top of mind every day, we deploy expert teams to help entities mitigate and recover from cyber incidents. And we stand ready to provide support to victims. We are clearly stronger together. So I urge you to continue to please share information on the vulnerabilities and incidents that you're seeing so that we can analyze and share that threat information to protect the 
not just the identity of victims, but protect future targets from compromise. The key to resilience is working together to play the long game. If we're only addressing what's directly in front of us, it will be nearly impossible to be ready for the threats we have not even imagined. Working together to build capacity and invest in capabilities early and often will result, in my view, in a more secure and resilient nation. At the end of the day, CISA was created and built by design to work across the public and private sectors to, to improve the security of our nation's critical infrastructure. And if the last year has taught us anything, it is that the threat landscape is only going to continue to evolve and become more complex. So whatever the threat of tomorrow is, we must begin preparing today and we must do it together. Thanks so much for the opportunity to spend time with you today and for working with us to defend today and secure tomorrow. Thanks, Mark.